Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read Caddyshack, the making of a Hollywood Cinderella story by Chris Nashawi, Nashawi, I guess that's how it's pronounced. I don't know how to actually pronounce his last name. But uh, this film, <coughs> I'm, I love Caddyshack, it's actually one of my favorite movies of all time. I'm not a big fan of golf in and of itself, but my grandfather, whom I barely knew, I never met him, uh, actually was responsible for creating um, the Cascades in Bloomington, so I guess I do have some ties to the the rich person's game. But yeah, it's, it's a game of privilege, actually, if you think about it, because you hear all, about all these hoity-toity, high and mighty, snooty, um, upper crust types and Caddyshack came from the minds of Saturday night um, uh, actually a Saturday night think tank and this was in the days before Saturday night became Saturday night live it was um, in the mid to late 70s and uh, there was a big rule that hardcore drugs shouldn't be on the set and of course a lot of them did um, marijuana because it was really common back in the day but there was really good cocaine on the set and I thought woo <laughs> that's a little scary but they weren't supposed to have it and a lot of them uh, got addicted and it said that one of the writers actually died in Kauai, Hawaii, because it was it was deemed an accident. I think it was Remy who, yeah, Remy was the one that was responsible. It was basically his baby, but it was said to have been Bill Murray's film, even though all of the, the big stars, they had Chevy Chase and Bill Murray and Rodney Dangerfield as the titular trio, and, uh, <laughs> I really like Murray and, and Chevy Chase. I, I grew up with Dangerfield too, and the comedy at the time was just golden, and nobody thought that it, well, Remy especially, he was um, going through quite a turbulent time, um, and he seemed to have a lot of depression issues too. The book speaks a lot of this. And he didn't get to see the film completed. He actually died. And I thought, holy crud. I mean, it's, it's so tragic. But like I said, there was an accident. And they had a, um, a funeral to support the fact that the film had become such a, a huge success. But as you can see, the gopher's on the cover. But the gopher really didn't come into... Um, into uh, the inception of the film until much later and a lot of the ad lib was done by Dangerfield but it's interesting especially with the um, the chemistry or lack of chemistry or <laughs> the butting of heads of some of the stars like um, I think it was Murray's character and a female co-star that didn't get along so well. Or was it Chase? I don't remember if it was Chase or Murray. I can't re quite recollect, but... Anyway, the gopher came later, and the gopher was actually designed by none other than George Lucas. <laughs> and I thought, really? <laughs> but he's retired. He can be found in Florida. But what's interesting is, um, of course, beloved Rodney died at 83 due to heart issue. Um, that's not really uncommon given his diet, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Rodney. I, you know, you were death, you don't get no respect, but uh, <laughs> it was on golf war. But um, Murray and um, Chase are in their own comedies um but it was really interesting to see how much of the film was pretty much thrown together and ad-libbed and it wasn't supposed to make any sense and it, it came upon the 
the heels of uh, blockbusters like Airplane and um, Animal House. They were thinking, oh, it's going to be another Animal House. A lot of people were thinking it was going to be a piece of schlock and not survive, but it made quite a bit of money when it was at the box office, so it turned out to be a huge phenomenal F you to um, the industry that thought that it was going to fail miserably. Uh, it just goes to show that the people that were involved with it actually believed in it, even though it had a very rickety kind of um, history, especially with um, the trio being interviewed. When they were interviewed, they didn't know how to act. It's almost like they had forgotten how to be funny, and it was really strange, but that's what happened according to the author and I thought hmm that's unusual that it would come across that way uh, it, the only one that was even half asked about it was uh, the writer of the actual the actual concept and he was half-hearted about um, getting the film off the ground and whatnot but Nonetheless, I'm glad they put it together. There was a sequel called Caddyshack 2. Of course, it did terribly. A lot of films that uh, tend to go off of the success and try to do a sequel don't often do so well as their predecessors, but there are exclusions to that rule. Caddyshack is not one of them, but... <laughs> I never even knew that there was a Caddyshack 2. I, was just, I guess it was... Um, sort of a uh, a mistake or a uh, a bad dream that they don't really want to remember or acknowledge. <laughs> it's like the red-headed stepchild of movies. <laughs> but um, that's basically all I have to say about the book. The book was very in intriguing. It was um, interesting to see what was going on behind the scenes and how some of the the actors or directors would either have camaraderie or just want to rip each other's um, esophagi out and <laughs> asphyxiate each other. But still, it was a very intriguing um, expose on how Caddyshack actually came to be and how Saturday Night Live became so popular and just the mindset of the people and how comedy was becoming more of a young person's game with Cheech and Chong and whatnot. And I, th I thought that was really uh, intriguing as well because I thought, oh yeah, because I really love Cheech and Chong myself. I'm a big, big fan, as you probably know. Uh, but a lot of the modern day comedy actually came later on and I thought, ah, this is the director. I need to meet this guy. This, this guy's a genius. He really is because this was something that they never thought would, um, spread, spread its wings and, and take off and soar like it did. And it just, it just goes to show you, you can't always judge a book by its cover. But that's about all I gotta say. So until next time, live long, prosper. Ciao, tutti.